Are you able to see ghosts? There are an unexpectedly large number of people who don't realize they can. I'm going to introduce you to a simple test that will let you know whether you can see ghosts or not. Are you ready? Try it out while you listen. First, find a quiet spot and close your eyes. Now, imagine the front door of your childhood home as accurately as possible. Once you've done that, open the door and walk in. Next, open every window in the house, one after the other. Once you've successfully opened all the windows, Proceed to close them all in the opposite order to how you just opened them. Then, finally, leave the house and that's it. It's all over. You can open your eyes again. Now, I have a question for you. Did you happen to see anyone in the hall or rooms while you were imagining your house? Supposing you did, then there is a good chance that you are able to see ghosts. The more attuned you are to seeing ghosts, the more people you would have seen in your house. Hello, and welcome to Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. I'm your host, Tara A. Devlin, and on this show we'll be looking at different urban legends from Japan, how they came about, and, when possible, the truth behind them. Now before we get started today, I just have a quick announcement. Starting from today, you can grab Kawabana, True Japanese Scary Stories from Around the Internet, Volume 2 and 3, for just 99 cents each. If you haven't picked up either of those volumes yet, you can get over 170 terrifying tales from Japan, right now, for less than the price of a coffee. Head over to koobana.net, or type in koobana at Amazon, to pick them up right now. This sale only lasts until Friday the 20th of July, so don't miss out. You can also pre-order the Toshiden Exploring Japanese Urban Legends book for a limited price of 99 cents. This price is for the pre-order only, so don't miss it. So, how did you do on this week's opening test? How many people did you see as you walked around your childhood home? If you didn't see anyone, then chances are good that you don't have any ability to see ghosts whatsoever. But if you did see someone, or even multiple people, then take note. That could mean you have a strong supernatural sense. This urban legend stresses that people have varying levels of ability to see ghosts. The idea of they can or someone's ability to sense the supernatural, is very strong in Japan. But it's not a yes or no thing. It comes with varying levels of ability. You can have strong or weak Daikan. You may be able to see some ghosts, but not others. Or sense some supernatural events, whilst being completely blind to the rest. But how can you tell if you're a regular human or a Super Saiyan on the Daikan scale? Let's take a look. First, you didn't see anyone. If you were walking around your childhood home and you didn't see anybody inside, then in this case it's unlikely you have any ability to see ghosts. 
Sorry. If you saw any family members or pets, then there's a good chance you have the ability to see ghosts. However, if your family or pets looked how they always do, then your ability isn't very high. But if they look strange, then there's a chance that you're in danger. Now, if you saw any strangers while you were walking around your childhood home, then you have a strong Daikan and will likely experience many supernatural events after this. But who was in the house? If it wasn't a friend or someone you knew, this could mean trouble. If you happened across that person in real life, chances are very high that they're already a ghost. But this isn't the only test you can take to see whether you have strong or weak Daikan. There are multiple tests that you can take to test your abilities. So let's take a look at a few of them. The first is the pinky test. Look at your left hand. Check the length of your pinky finger and ring finger on your left hand. How long is it? If your pinky is longer than the first joint on your ring finger, then you can see ghosts. If it's not, you can't. The longer your pinky finger is, the stronger your ability to sense ghosts is. The second is the dinner test. Again, I want you to stop and think. What did you eat for dinner last night? Take a moment and try to remember. Do you see it? Look closely. If you remember what food you had, you're unable to see ghosts. But if you see yourself eating dinner in third person or from far away, then you have a very strong Daikan. The third test is the Kitsune test. I want you to make the shape of a kitsune with your hand. To do this, hold your middle two fingers against your thumb, while your index finger and pinky finger remain in the air. It should somewhat resemble a fox's head. Now, with your index finger and pinky raised in the air, Try to press them together above your other fingers. How did you go? If your fingers were able to touch, then you can see ghosts. If you couldn't, then you can't. The fourth is a self-check test. It's said that people who have several of the following factors have an extremely strong Nekan. There are five, so I want you to listen closely and mentally check off how many of these fit you. Number one, your family, especially your parents or grandparents, can see ghosts. Number two, you have a powerful imagination. Number three, you have intense impressions of things. Number four, you often have trouble sleeping at night. Number five, you often question people about their complexion. 
So how did you go? Were you able to check any of them off? If you have over half of the above list, then you have a strong ability to see ghosts. They can is said to pass down through the generations. So, especially if you answered yes to number one, then there's no mistaking it. Now the next test is called the clasp test. I want you to clasp your hands together, interlocking fingers with yourself. Which index finger is on top? From your left hand or from your right hand? If the index finger from your left hand is on top, that means you have the ability to see ghosts. Try it again. Clasp your hands together. But this time, I want you to deliberately put the other hand on top. Feels strange, doesn't it? That's because this action is controlled by either the left or right side of your brain. If your left hand ends up on top, that means you work predominantly with the right side of your brain. People who work with the right side of their brain are said to be dreamers, artistic folks, who can see that which isn't really there. As a side note, I personally tried this test when I was working at a junior high in Japan. The teacher brought it up one day and asked all the kids to clasp their hands together without telling them why. He made them check which index finger was on top, but rather than it being your ability to see ghosts or not, this test supposedly revealed whether you had a male or female spirit. Of course, cue a lot of kids forcing their hands to switch places if they got the gender they didn't want. Now, these days you can even download a bunch of apps that will tell you whether you have a strong neikan or not, simply through a series of questions that usually mirror everything you've just listened to. The story with the windows is the most popular of all, however and you can often find people's answers to how many people they saw in the comments of various blogs that post the story. So, how did you go on this week's tests? Do you have a strong or weak Khan? You can let me know on Twitter, Facebook or on the website and see how others did as well. As for me, I passed about half of the tests, but failed the others, so I guess my Daycan isn't that strong. That's probably for the best though, because I don't especially have a strong desire to see any ghosts. I'd much rather read about them than see them in person. But that brings us to the end of this week's show. Don't forget, you can pick up Kowabana Volume 2 and 3 right now on Amazon for only 99 cents each. And you can pre-order Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends for the same price. If you haven't picked up any of these yet, there's no better time than now. Make sure you get them before the sale ends next week. And you can also head over to our Patreon to get early access to both this show and the Koobana podcast every week as well as special bonus episodes. Head over to koobana.net to find out more. And I'll see you again next time for even more Toshiden, exploring Japanese urban legends. Want even more scary stories? Head over to koobana.net for new translations every week. You can also join our Patreon for exclusive stories you won't find anywhere else. Head over to koobana.net now.